Welcome to Dingsco FM's podcast, where we discuss personal, academic, career, entrepreneur, and business growth with guests who are an expert in their field. In today's episode, we focus on career growth. We'll look at what it means to transition from one career to another and how this can be done successfully. The world of work evolves constantly, and at some point, you might find yourself reevaluating your career path. You might come to the conclusion that you're in a career that still provides you with everything that you need. Or you might find that you want to make a career change. Before you make the leap and make the change, it's always best to think, plan, and gather the wisdom of those who have already walked the path. Today, we get to enjoy the wisdom of someone who has first-hand experience in making such a significant life change. We're excited to have Jade Bowes with us to share her career change journey. Anyone who knows Jade knows her as a very creative, personable, and positive person. Before becoming a UI and UX designer, Jade worked in the corporate world in the early part of her career. After feeling that this is not the right environment for her, she moved on to become a hairstylist and an entrepreneur. She managed a successful business for five years and created many employment opportunities for freelance stylists. A big part of her career change was getting the skills and qualifications that she needed for her new profession. So in 2018, Jade attained her highest certificate in design and applied arts, And in 2021, she graduated with her bachelor's degree in graphic design. When she's not designing simple, elegant and impactful solutions for her clients, you'll find Jade hiking and enjoying the outdoors, taking road trips, creating amazing drawings and cooking a delicious meal. Welcome to the show, Jade. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. Lovely to have you here. So Jade, in terms of your career, you've had a very interesting journey. You've run your own successful business for many years, and more recently, you transitioned to a career in UI and UX design. Please tell us more about your career journey. Where did it all start? So I started as an eager young person after you finish high school, and you're eager to go out there and saw the world, you know. Starting wasn't exactly the first thing on my list. So I got a job at NetBank as a PA for one of the vendor managers. And there I also managed to grow a lot and learn a lot of skills that I'm able to use today. But even with that, I just felt like I wanted more. Like I felt like I wasn't really living my complete fulfillment because corporate is not exactly the most creative space to be in. So eventually I spoke to my boss and said, you know, I think it's time that I want to explore other options in life and I want to go into hairdressing and tattoos. So I done that and many people thought I was crazy, like how did the two go together? From there, you obviously get paid out and then I was able to pay to like go and study now my newfound passion. From there, when I was done with that, I started working. My mom had a garage in a, at the backyard and she had, you know, like one of those old school roll up uh, garage uh, door thingies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, people actually would come into there and from there it started growing. And some people were like, they don't want to come where the, the roll up door is, which also helped me, forced me to grow. And from there I grew. I opened another salon, um, like a proper shop, and I opened a spa at a resort. And then later on, we also opened up a salon at a house in mm-hmm. Oakdean, which I also bought. But then again, I had the same dilemma from the whole net bank dilemma. Then I was like, this also can't be my purpose. Like, you know, this just can't be it. But I had like amazing ladies that I work with and they were able to feed their families. It was like a bit of a dilemma for me because I wasn't feeling, you know, that excitement anymore. It was like, okay, now what next? But you also don't want to like leave them stranded. After much consideration, most of them, most of the ladies found new jobs. And then I went on further because I was doing the marketing for the salon anyway. And I was really enjoying that. And I wanted to focus on it, especially because this digital era that we're in, you know. So I wanted to move on and take that same client service work ethic and apply it in the digital space. And then that's when I, again, I took all my savings from there. And then I started studying again. And yeah, now I am a newbie in this whole digital space, which is only this time. It's a little more daunting, especially because I'm not as young as like I was before and competing with so many of these youngsters and so many people that are in there. So those are major life changes that you went through at different stages of your life, Jade. And as we all know, when it comes to making a change, there's usually a specific moment that helps us to kickstart the process. So what motivated you to embark on your most recent career change? 
I was already doing the marketing part of for Social Salon, and I was very intrigued by that. And I was only using the app called Canva. So now we know there's like so much more that you can do from that. And that really, I was so interested and intrigued by that. And I really wanted to tap into that space. I didn't want to get left behind because there's so much you can do. It's so exciting. It's so creative. The, the possibilities are endless of what you can do. So I just thought, okay, I have an option. Stay comfortable where I am or just dive in, take a chance. And then, you know, go with it because either that or you're going to love with the regrets and be like, what would have actually happened if I had to go for that? Or, you know, what could have been? Jade, you know, change is often difficult for us as humans. But as you said earlier, you've managed to make several successful changes, including the studies that you made towards your new career and the move that you recently made across the country. What are some of the highlights of this journey of yours? You know, like when you're about to bungee jump, it's just as you're about to fall off the cliff, you know, that fear that you have just before you jump, that's how you constantly feel all the time. But the feeling when you do jump and you bounce and you're actually there and you're flying, I think for me, that's what motivates me the most, knowing that, okay, if I do do this, my life is going to be so much better. I'm going to be living my full fulfillment because at the end of the day, you do think about it, you only have one life. And if you are successful, like if I was successful and I had a lot of clients, that can't honestly be the only thing that life has to offer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just want to explore. I just want to like see what's out there. And so with that scariness that comes with it, Jade, there are often the challenges and the hurdles. So what are some of those challenges that you felt that you had to overcome along the way? So the one fear that I, I would say is money, honestly, because when I did have a full-time job, like at NetBank example, I had a set salary every month. Then when I had a salon, I may not have had a set salary every month, but I made way more money because I was able, I was in way more control of like how much I'd make. And then going and studying and being in this position now where, you know, you're done studying, you're looking for a job and you have no money. Mm -hmm. You must think to yourself, okay, that's a nice top, but oh, how much does it cost? Let me see my expenses and stuff. So that that is the daunting part. If I take away not just the money aspect of it and I go like with my mental health, one of my biggest challenges then I must say is working towards something, always trying to work on that next project, always being like, oh, okay, what's the next thing going to be? Sometimes you forget to just take a breather and just stop and appreciate where you are currently at at the moment. Now, when I moved to Cape Town, I no more have a salon. I don't have a job for the first time in my life. You have to be so careful with your pennies. Then you start like doubting yourself. It's almost like, what is my life? And where am I? Oh, I am nothing. I have nothing. Then afterwards, it's a reflex. Then it starts saying, oh, what if nobody wants to hire you? You don't have enough experience. There's so many youngsters in this industry. All this doubt starts playing. And that is when I got that anxiety attack. And because you're so caught up in the past and so caught up in the present that it just becomes so much for you. And once you like take check of what's going on and start focusing on your mind, like your mind is the most powerful tool that you actually will ever have. And I started with the audio book, which I told you about. I also started meditating, affirmations. You know, it's just take that 20 minutes just for yourself before you start your day, before you reach out and grab your phone and go onto social media, before you think of what work you must do for the day. Just wake up in the morning, say your gratitude, take time, meditate, clear your mind, say your affirmations. I honestly believe that is what sees you through. And then that's what also gave me the guts to keep going. That point in your life where you don't have as much as you wish you would have and you don't have the dream job you have. You're not driving that dream car, like, you know, how you planned it before you started doing it. It's okay because that's the beautiful part that gets to you to you where you are. And if you think about it, if it was so easy, don't you think everybody would be doing it? Then it, in turn, it would also become so hard because it would be so saturated as well mm. so yeah so I, I guess it goes back to the biggest challenge being like your mind so Jade I'm so glad that you touched on the different areas that kept you motivated throughout your journey as you were going through your transition were there also specific people that you surrounded yourself with throughout your journey 
So moving to Cape Town also meant that I'd lose my support system that I had back at home. So that made it a bit worse, not having that safety net around me. But I was fortunate that my sister and my partner were close by. They were my cheerleaders, I can say. They were my support system. So Jade, over the last few years, you've gone through this transition and you've made this career change and you've gotten to this point in your life. So overall, how do you feel about the career change that you've made? You know, when I started studying, I was so optimistic. I was like, yes, I'm going to take the life on and all of that. Now when it's time to actually look for the job, those feelings of enthusiasm are not there as much as they were. You basically have to go now and sell yourself to people. The one time I applied for a job, when you apply for the job and when you put your work together to apply for the job, you're like, wow, I'm giving this my all, I'm going to get it. And then you get a response like, dear John, I'm so sorry. (laughs) We regret to inform you. Or some people don't even reply, you know. That feeling, it almost somehow overshadows that enthusiasm and excitement of getting into this new industry that you worked so hard to get into. So having gone through this journey, Jade, and felt the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows of it, there may be a listener in our audience who wants to make a change in their career path, but they really don't know where to start. So what sort of advice and words of encouragement would you have for them? I think we all go through things and experience things differently. But the best advice that I could give anybody personally is just to be gentle on yourself. Except that it's all a process. Like you can't just go from studying a degree the one day and the very next day going to be the CEO of a company. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're going to have to go through, you know, the process and you're going to be the girl that's going to have to make the coffee. Even though you studied, you're going to have to go through the motion and build who you are. Another thing that I'd also say is that it is important, especially during this time, what you feed your mind For example, personally, going onto social media and just looking at social media influencers who are just living their best lives and just doing everything great. Obviously, that's going to affect where you are and how you feel because it's what you're feeding your mind. You are the only person that controls your future. If you want to think something, you're going to create it. In my mind, I'm imagining myself as being this badass, amazing UIX designer that is just going to change the way users experience life. And I see myself in this amazing position, making all of the struggle worth it. And I would just say, even though we get our dear John letters, we just got to keep on. Lovely advice, Jade. And earlier in the interview, you also mentioned a book that you chatted with me about. And I wonder if you'd like to recommend that book to the listeners as well. I would love to recommend it. It's life changing. I actually listen to it every day when I get out the shower and I get changed. I just hear it in the background. It's badass. And yeah, just like listen to it bit by bit. Listen to it with an open mind and it will definitely change your life. And then lastly, as we get to the end of our interview, which is very sad because I'm enjoying my time with you. Um, Me too, man. <laughs> there'll no doubt be people that want to get in touch with you. Maybe they want to chat with you about maybe a career change that they are struggling with. Or maybe people want to chat with you about your career path and where you are at right now. Where can they perhaps reach out to you? Where's the best channel that they can use? I'm probably not the only person that is struggling with building myself as a brand and getting a job. So on my different social media platforms, my Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, I'm actually going to start sharing everything that I learn about as I go along of how to get my job. If they follow me or just check it out, I'm sure they'll be able to check on me there. So the handle is Jade Bridget Bowers on Instagram. And then on Facebook, it is going to be Jade.Bowers. And on LinkedIn, it's Jade at Design. And just to clarify for our audience, Bowers is spelled B-O-W-E-S. Yes, B-O-W-E-S. So thank you so much for being our guest today, Jade. It's been so great to have you here and to learn from you. And thank you for sharing your journey with us and for showing us the importance of planning and making a change that we need in our lives, especially when it comes to something as important as one's career. You've shown us how we can keep going and cope with the change so that we can reach our goal and we can look back and take all the lessons and feel proud of ourselves. 
I'm really excited to have you join us again in future to update us on how your career journey is going and how you've continued to build your career path. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. And I would also just like to remind the listeners, go easy on yourself and just remember that you're not alone. And there are people out there like Diane and myself that are there to support you on the way. And just remember like my motto that I live by, you only have this one life. So just love it. We hope that you enjoyed today's podcast episode. Be sure to come back regularly for more great content that focuses on personal, career, entrepreneur, and business growth. Find out more about our coaching services and get in touch with our team by following the link in our post or visit dingscoconsulting.co.za.